Hello and welcome to another one of our videos uh, that we're talking, looking at with back pains and busting some of the myths that surround this. Um, so far um, we've been looking at uh, several of the myths. This is the uh, fourth one in the series. Is that there's actually one that I missed which we'd recorded earlier which was about resting. Um, but um, a lot of these strategies that people use are based on poor information and um, and, and in fact some of these things here which you'll see stretching, rest itself, um, strengthening your abs, hamstrings, uh, hamstring stiffness, some of these are actually true and they are actually a very important part of the process just the problem is when they're done on their own they're very ineffective and that's, that's where I'm trying to get to on these myths so please don't take these the wrong way in the saying that, I'm, that you don't ever need to strengthen your abs because you do it just needs to be put in context with other things. If that's all you do, you won't get very far. And same if you just rest and hope the pain goes away, but you don't address the reason you're in pain, you're not going to get very far. So um, so today, Smith, we're going to be looking at Pilates. And, and people, um, the question is often asked, is this the best thing to do for back pain? I've heard it's the best thing. Um, so well, we're going to look into this, but before I get into it, I've avoided making video about this before in case people take this the wrong way and I have many great friends who I've known for a long time and they operate studios that do Pilates and, and yoga and stuff like that and, and they do a fantastic job and I love everything they do it's it's awesome um, so I'm not about to say that Pilates is crap and don't do it or whatever because it's not the case um, what I'm trying to say is it may not be the best thing for um, for back pain, especially when you're trying to find a solution for your specific problem, um, some people may do fine with it, and that's that's all good, you know, and um, I'm well done. But there's many people that I come across that do not, and this video I hope to explain why that is. Um, so, firstly, why is Pilates rated so high? What is it? How has it gained that reputation? So, um, it, it's to be honest, in the last five to ten years, like it's exploded in Australia in particular of um, how popular it is and, and people rating it as the gold class of core training and stuff. In the past it was more popular dancers and who are emphasising flexibility you know, with some sort of element of strengthening um, on a very low, low, low scale. Um, so there's many great things it can do um, and, and for some people I, I would say maybe it is the best thing that they could try and do because they need it would, benefit their specific needs. Um, also bear in mind myself, I'm qualified in Pilates. I spent two years doing courses and endless amount of logging hours and for mat work and reformer so I'm, I know exactly what I'm talking about because I'm qualified as a teacher myself. So, um, And there's some ex exercises I use all the time but there's quite a lot of them that I'll never use and I'll explain to you in this video why. So what are my um, What's the problems I see with using, utilising this with back pain? Well, firstly, if it's in a class situation, you're already going to be up against a problem because the class can't take into account the specific needs that that is specific to your body and how you're, the mechanism for your injury, what the the muscle imbalances you have, the posture you have, the reason you're in pain. People could have ten people could all have a herniated disc, and they could all have it for ten different reasons. So. Follow doing a class format where everyone does the same exercises is very dangerous because there's some of the exercises might be great and they'll do some good things for you but there'll be some that will be terrible for you and will actually make it worse. The, 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 the trick is to find the ones that are going to do you good and only do those. Um, it's the same thing with, we see with the yoga. It's, um, uh, it has some good things to it but it has some bad things to it and, and it really takes someone to know what they're doing to find the right one. Um, to use a one-size-fits-all program is always very risky. Um, so the exercise has got to be specific to you. And I, like I've said, I've worked with hundreds of cases of bulging discs, and I've, I don't really, I don't think I've ever used the same program twice. I've never came across the same person twice. I've had many things that are similar, but there's always been something that's a bit different. Um, what I found helped one person was likely to hurt the next one, even though they had the exact same diagnosed injury. Um, and the reason for this is the mechanism that, that was causing it, the trigger, the way that they moved, the things that they were doing were different. Their strategy for moving was, was the problem and, and I had to use assessments to find this out um, and, and really digging deep into finding out what is it that's behind all this. Um, 
So the question is, what about one-on-one -on -one Pilates? If it's not a class, is one-on-one -on -one still better? Well, the problem that I have with the, the class, and there's lots of types of Pilates that are sort of hybrid versions of it, but if we take the pure Pilates, which is um, where it's sort of originated from, and the main thing that's behind their thing is this imprint um, principle, which is to how they engage their core. And and you'll see here, this is the anterior tilt, but a lot of people will have this anterior tilt, exaggerated arch, um, neutral pelvis where it's not so much, and there should be a neutral curve. The imprint actually wants you to go flat. All right, now, they're saying pull the ribs towards the hips, get rid of the arch. I don't mind this cue, get ribs towards the hips, but getting rid of the arch, I have a huge problem with that. And, and especially for herniated discs, which are the most common problem I see with back injuries, that is bad news. This is not good. I would rather you stay in neutral. And there's better strategies for engaging your core than sucking your abs in, all right? um, which again we'll get into. But the reason behind all this is to, because there's stacks of research um, about the importance of the transverse abdominus muscle and multifidus pelvic floor, diaphragm, all the key inner unit muscles that provide your stabilization for your lumbar spine and pelvis. Um, so we've, there's been heaps of stuff proven that with back pain people that doesn't fire early enough or not at all. So hence our way of thinking is, well, if I just train that muscle, it should make all the difference. Uh, but I, again, it doesn't work like that. There's so many moving pieces. You could be excellent at doing it lying down on the floor. That doesn't mean a thing to you when you stand up and move. All right, this is where, the, and again, you'll see there's another big problem with, that I see with Pilates. So, but first thing to understand is neutral's best. Whenever you're going like this, you are now going to create a herniated disc from the one thing you were using to get rid of. And so I could turn a good person into a bad spine from using this strategy all the time. Um, so, the, so the spinal stabilization should be activated in neutral and more effectively is used as a bracing um, method instead of a hollowing. And a bracing method is something that's spoken about by Dr. Stuart McGill. You can look up all his stuff. He talks about this all the time. Um, and that's where you're really starting to use the entire body and not just one area. And it's not so much a pulling in of the abs, it's more of a, um, like bracing for a punch in the stomach is probably a good way of describing it. Um, and that's where, and you're trying to use more than just the muscles around the abdominals, working as a team to create a good stiffness especially when you're in the standing position. That's where the hollowing technique of the Pilates might be a good technique when you're on the floor, um, but standing is it's not as effective. Um, so as I said before, this imprint tick technique starts to bring people into this posterior tilt, and that's where the bulging disc stuff starts to happen. So if I wanted to create bulging discs, I start doing lots of this, and that's where we see butt gripping, which leads to hip impingements, breathing dysfunctions, um, stacks of things come about from this. So. Um, I don't really encourage anyone to use that. So constantly flexing the lumbar spine. This is where you just need to understand the lumbar spine doesn't want to be moved. It just wants to stay neutral no matter what position, we, what exercise we're doing. We don't really want to move it from there. So uh, every time you keep bending and flexing it um, from moving your pelvis all the time, you're just ruining your, st your stability. And, and you, this is where all these sort of things start to just become big problems from the strategies you were using. And we spoke about this in the last myth with abdominal training. So the key is to remain, remain in neutral. So these is it's like a more of a yoga pose, but it's a bending action. Um, and this rounding out, there's a herniated disc about to happen. There's another herniated disc about to happen. And there's one that did happen. All right, so um, just remember the spine does not want to be bent. It wants to be held still. So any excessive movement through this lumbar region is going to give you problems. All right. So if you're going to too much extension, it's a problem. And I think, to be honest, that's where this stuff comes because we see a lot of excessive. I don't necessarily think this is so much of a problem as people believe because this anterior tilt is a crucial for developing the glute strength. It's just more it will come back to the movement strategies behind it. I think this has sort of been given a bit of a bad rap. And, uh, that's not necessary, all right? So, and I think people are trying to get rid of it and then end up with a back pain when they should have just stayed where they were. So, um, but anyway, so the keys to remain in neutral. So the danger of the imprint, uh, we've been over and we spoke about in the abs myth. Um, to, and like I mentioned before, disrupts normal breath mechanics. I see a lot of p people coming from it can't actually breathe with a normal breath. And that's where you might get good benefits from yoga, where they learn how to use their diaphragm better. 
Um, again, and they, these people can get into a, a real bad stage of like chronically gripping their abs all the time, which leads to groin strain stitches if they go running. And again, these gripping problems become uh, other joint injuries, neck and hip problems come from gripping. All right, so yoga is a great way to sort of learn a normal breath pattern. The roll down exercise, again, I have huge issues with this. Um, I, I, I remember being taught at the time and I didn't like it for my own back at the time. Um, the principles behind it are trying to make every facet joint move um, and they call it spinal health. Um, I see this as just dangerous exercise and again, if you don't believe me, go and look at Stuart McGill, look that up and you'll see he mentions this a thousand times and examined it in all of his books. Um, this is exactly the mechanism of a disc bulge, so I don't know the point of doing that when there's, it's good to be able to do it in life, but to do it as a repetitive exercise is a problem. All right, so if you're unable to do it ever, then it's not good to you, but I don't see using it as an exercise is going to do anything other than just destroy your discs. Um, the next big problem I see is Pilates does not teach movement. All right, so lying on your back doing this, and no matter how good you get at doing this, we'll never change that. To get better at that, you need to do that. You need to learn how to bend correctly. It won't matter how strong your abs are, if if you if the only way you know to bend over is like that, <laughs> you're going to hurt your back. It's just guaranteed. So. Um, so there's a good little quote here. So poor movement can exist anywhere in the body, but poor movement patterns only exist in the brain. And the only way to change them is to go to the brain to within the pattern, within the program. You must understand these are programs that are running. And these programs, uh, your, when your body says bend over, pick this up, it runs the program of bending over to pick it up. It doesn't look at what muscles are used. It uses a program that uses them all at once because that's how we move. You can't just train a TVA and expect the TVA to change everything else. If everything else doesn't know anything different, it'll just ignore what you've said there and ruin the stability to do the bending. So motor programs, so for example, this bending action, the brain is the big, the big driver of this, and it's the one that's influenced the timing of everything. So things like extension of the thoracic, the lumbar, stabil the, the lumbar stability from the abdominals, the hips need to be mobile, the glutes and hamstrings need to do the bulk of the workload, and the feet must be stable. And if any one of these things go wrong, and there's plenty of others as well, I just, just to give you an example, that bending action, all of this happens within a split second. You don't have time to think about it, it just happens. So your brain just says, what program do I have? It doesn't say, is it a good one or a bad one? It just says, what program do I have? run that program. Um, it's your job to identify the faulty ones and change them to good ones that don't ruin joints. Um, so when you're training them in isolation, so if you say, oh, I'm going to strengthen my glutes and my hamstrings, I'm going to strengthen my TBA, I'm going to work everything separately, um, that, that might be all good. But the, the problem is you may not actually change the program. So when you stand up to bend over it, that's what it does again. So you're basically separating the muscle from the team. It doesn't know how to work with its partners. It doesn't know how to work together. So the timing and the sequence is wrong, not necessarily their strength. And this is the brain that runs all this. So you've got to train the brain, and you can only do it in the, in the pattern itself. So the patterns are like groups of movements linked together in chunks. So the chunks are the motor program. And any you link motor programs link many movements together, and that's how you complete tasks. Now when you start to train one cog, one muscle, it's a bit like training this cog to spin faster, but not relative to the other cogs. Um, so this one gets out of time with its with its partners and it disrupts the movement and, and the entire chain. So you, if you're going to improve the strength of one, you must improve it with the others in, involved so they know how to play together to get the timing right. The timing's everything to a motor program, all right? And that's where the big, big problem with the Pilates is it does, ignores that. Um, so again, you could have a strong muscle, but if it doesn't fire at the right time, it's completely useless. And that's from Vladimir Yanda, a pioneer in... Um, musculoskeletal problems. So so um, ignoring the process of to getting to standing movement. So again, there's a lot of great exercise and, and again, please don't take the, this view that I'm trashing Pilates because there's a lot of great abdominal isolated exercises that I do use. But I have the intention of trying to progress them. I don't really stop there. I, my goal is to get you to a point where I can take you to the programs of standing and you can take the benefits from them and put them into that. So. It is a good little chart from another video that we did once before where, say before you had pain, you're able to do all of these things. 
and the painful movement would kick in if you did a heavy deadlift it was too heavy for you or heavy bending like you're picking up a fridge in the backyard or in the house or something all right but prior to that you're able to do all of these things without pain once the pain kicks in though all of these things are impossible to do now so you, you can't do gardening you can't run at all you can't even lunge you struggle to get out of a chair you know I mean? so um, so your pain-free movements limited only these things so I need to work out a way to change these programs so I need to change the timing the positioning the way your strategy of doing it and strengthen them so that they become um, not, not painful anymore all right I can't do that lying on the floor I can't use a floor exercise which was down here because all of these are uh, standing besides this sitting one I can't use a lying down exercise to change a standing exercise I have to use the version of, of the one that's giving me problem all right so so what I've sort of summarized here people they spend all their time sitting kneeling in the floor in Pilates some, some of it's standing um, the reformer work which most people think is the gold standard I don't really think it's that great for um, you know, for some people it's good, but it, it, I don't find it's 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 very robotic. It runs on rails that only go forward and backward. It doesn't really have the functional everyday movement, which is in 360 degrees. And and again, all the stuff standing up. There's some things you can do reformer standing up, but again, like we don't sort of walk around on things that slide backwards and forwards. People have problems bending over when they have back pain and doing things like that. That's really where I see that I can help them the most. So. Um, and again, I could say you could be great at all these things, but if you don't change how you bend over to pick your shopping bags up, then you haven't really achieved anything. Um, so in summary, Pilates can be great. I'm not trashing it. It can be awesome. Some people might do really good with it, and, and I'm completely wrong, and that's fine. Um, but a lot, a lot of people I see that come to see me have come and tried that before, and it didn't work for them, and this may be the, some of the reasons why. So you must make your, your program specific to you. Avoid the imprint stuff, just remain in neutral. Avoid the roll down exercise, especially, especially if you've got back pain. Learn how to evolve from the floor movements. So if you've been doing them and you've got good at them, try and get to the standing ones. Lunges, squats, deadlifts, they're always going to be the hard ones for people with back pain. Um, always look for how, how you're moving, you know, because this is really the reason behind your problem in the first place. Change this and everything will be fine. Um, so for more information, um, these good programs we have with all the assessments and exercises, all that sort of stuff. You know, so you can download that. That's a 90-minute video with an instruction manual. There's a free report. Just go to the website, have a look in the description under the video, and you'll find all the information about that there. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you haven't taken the wrong way. Like I said, Pilates is fine um, if it's in context and you're doing other things. If you're using it in combination with strength training, it's perfect. If you're just using it on its own, you may not get what you're looking for. Alright, so I hope you enjoy that. We'll see you on the next one.